So uh, thank you everybody for tuning in today. I'm going to be going through a presentation of Onshape and we're gonna stress how working in the cloud is a big benefit. So first of all, I guess starting off is Onshape is in the cloud. It is the only CAD system 100% in the cloud. And by that, I mean there's no downloads, there's no plugins, there's nothing. All you need is access to the cloud. So what that means to a company like yours is that it's a low hardware cost and generally it's low IT cost. There's not a lot of overhead that needs to be managed. Um, also, you can access the cloud from anywhere, anywhere that you have internet access, that is. Um, also, it's not hardware dependent. So it doesn't really matter uh, what type of device you have. Uh, you can access, as long as it can access the cloud, you can access on shape. You have a lot of security in the cloud. So uh, we have really Onship is a, is a combination of data management and CAD, which again makes it unique. But uh, what it allows you to do is in, in the data management aspect of it is kind of develop roles uh, or teams or groups of people and assign different capabilities to them. That way we can kind of roll out information to different groups in different ways. Um, it's also auditable. So Onshape keeps track of everything you do. Um, it's good for a couple of really big reasons. The first one is that if you need to check on who's been accessing what and for how long, you can do that. Another one is because it keeps track of everything, you never lose anything. So as a CAD operator or a designer like myself, uh, the system doesn't crash. I can go back to any point in history and start from there. So nothing is ever lost. I don't have to do a bunch of saves or save as or any of that. It's always being tracked, always being saved. Two-factor authentication, going along with the security discussion I started with. Um, there's an SLC2 certification, and that's just the kind of certification you need if you want to be dealing with other people's information in the cloud. And there's also uh, other types of encryption we have. So it is secure, your data is secure in the cloud. Interesting thing, is the software updates really, really frequently. Uh, it updates every three weeks. In fact, we just got an update on Tuesday of this week. Uh, so the software, and everybody's on the same version. So you don't ever have that issue of, uh, I can't send them these files because they're on an older version than us or something like that. Everybody is on the same version at the same time. As I mentioned before, hardware support is Pretty much BYOD, you know, bring your own device. So if you're on a Windows or Mac or Linux, Chromebook, if you've got a phone, you can do that and access Onshape as well. Again, that's the benefit of being in the cloud. We also integrate with a lot of other softwares um, that are out there. Um, some are cloud-based, some are not. But uh, here I want to talk about some of the capabilities of Onshape, real-time collaboration between users. So you're thinking, and that's what I'm gonna show you today. But the thing is, is that people say, that's crazy. You know, how can you have two people working on the same thing at the same time? Well, the reason, first of all, that argument comes up is because you can't, right? No one else can do that. Um, no one can divide up their kernel and allow multiple people to access it at the same time and access the same data. But I shake. Um, it has built-in commenting, as we have found from this year, the way things have gone. A lot of people work from home or from other locations. Uh, it doesn't matter really where you are as long as you can access the cloud and we can communicate back and forth using the embedded commenting capabilities in Onshape. We'll take a look at that today. And there's a follow mode so one person can see exactly what I'm doing as I'm zooming in, uh, in and out or um, highlighting certain uh, components or things like that. That's the concept of branching. This is really kind of unique as well. If you look over here on the right side, you'll see kind of a history tree. And this is all the things that have been developed over time. We can branch off at any point we want and develop new ideas or different offshoots of that. Should we want to integrate that back into the main timeline, we can do that using a merge capability. But what it allows us to do is maybe develop a couple of different ideas simultaneously with other people and then pick the best of those ideas or a variety of other ways that we can use and leverage this branching capability. As I mentioned before, it keeps total history so we can restore from any point in time. Um, <clears throat> complete, uh, complete detail of history, 
uh, we can compare, since we have the total history there, we can compare any two points in the history. So here's, and here, uh, kind of in the upper right, we see the same component, but in two different stages of its life. It initially started off like this. It eventually broke into an, a new version of the component looking like this. We can go back to any one of these uh, times and, and use those as going forward points if we wanted to. As live viewing tool with a simplified UI. So what that means is that I can send a link to somebody. They can click on it and they're in Onshape. They don't have any downloads. They don't use a license. They don't use my license, but it allows you to view uh, viewing capabilities. And then again, we can assign tasks because it's a data management system as well. Uh, we can assign who does what and when. And uh, people have an action item or a to-do list um, that we can uh, ex see and then kind of go through. Um, after we attain and finish those actions, we click on them and they are removed then again from our list. So that's a little bit of the PowerPoint that I wanted to go through today. Uh, what I'm going to do at this point is get into the software itself. So let's uh, let's pop up Onshape here. Um, when I log into Onshape, basically uh, what I'm presented on my home screen are components, assemblies, things that I've worked on recently. And then I have a, a series of folders here that either I have created or that other people have given me access to. And so you can see I keep most of my stuff over here, but we have lots of other um, different folders and ways of getting at information. Should I want to look for something? I can go up here, and this is where we're getting into the data management again. You know, what exactly am I looking for? Am I looking for a part? Um, I could say, you know, what kind of state in life is it in? Is it released? Is it pending? So Onshape takes care of all of that as well with a built-in release management system and workflow. Uh, we can also say we can search by attributes. So what kind of user attributes do we have um, and things like that to find exactly uh, what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do at this point is actually I'm going to also let me pop up uh, one other thing here. We'll go back to my on shape. But over here is my login so we can see my image over here. I'm going to say um, Let's take a look at my account just real quickly. So right when you log in, Onshape asks you who you are and asks you a series of questions um, that basically kind of define uh, the defaults for your system. So it'll ask you what units you want to work in. Again, you can change them anytime you want, but starting out, what kind of units do you want to work in? We realize that people who are using Onshape are coming from another CAD system. Uh, so what type of CAD system are you coming from? We'll flavor the mouse behavior to imitate that. So it makes it easier to learn on shape and to use on shape. And then there's also the capability of having little pop-up menus so that the customizable, obviously, that uh, just the things that I use frequently will pop up. Otherwise, I can always go to the, to the main menus and, and access things. So let's go and take a look uh, working with a design here. I'm going to call up this, uh, this backhoe design. So when we <clears throat> start working with something, what we do is we create what's called a part studio. And a part studio is a holder of information. So I can create parts here, create assemblies, create drawings, but I can also store other information here. So if I look at the part studio a little bit more in depth, you can see that I have you know, an assembly. I also have the components that I've created for the assembly. Um, I've got a couple of different folders that I've created here in this part studio. So we can see that I have some Word documents for some requirements. I also have a snapshot of the backhoe that we're developing this boom for. So any of the information that I would need concerning this particular product can be stored in my part studio. So let's go back and uh, kind of start talking a little bit about the interface that we're working with with Onshape. Uh, across the top are all the commands that I need. So very simple, easy to get at, uh, parametric, solid modeling, all the basic commands that you used to seeing in any other CAD system, they're here too. Uh, so extrudes, revolves, lofts, sweeps, rounds, draft, all of those things along the top here. It's also a series of tools here for working with uh, non-parametric data or let's say maybe third-party data. If you bring in a step file, an IGES file, I need to change the diameter of a hole, move some things around, you know, delete a boss or whatever. Those are some tools for that. 
And then we have some tools over here for creating sheet metal components and things like that. And finally, user-defined features. So there's a library of user-defined features out there that we can have access to. You notice this one that you have um, kind of highlighted here does beams, right? So instead of me having to create a profile of a beam and extrude it out, I just pull from a library of beams, fill in the, uh, the uh, specifics about the beam, and uh, it automatically uh, brings it in for me. So things like that. And you can create your own. That's the great thing about Onshape, is the same tools used to create these user-defined features are the exact same tools that the developers use. Uh, really easy to do uh, and to leverage that capability. So everybody uh, does have that uh, capability as well. So that's a little tour of the uh, interface of Onshape. As we see over here, we have our feature tree. So these are all the features that have been created um, for this boom. And then also the individual parts that were created. So when we create something in Onshape, we can say it's its own part or it's part of another part, uh, things like that. So let's kind of start out here um, with, uh, I'm going to turn on a sketch here. And I want to start working down on this lower part of the boom. And, you know, there's a lot of components here. So maybe I could pick on this uh, particular component and um, I could say that I want to isolate this component. So basically, it kind of turns everything else kind of a, a little lighter color so I can really focus on this. And I can bring some more components in, dragging the drag handle so that now, you know, now I have a really good concept of where I'm designing inside of. So anything that I create will or will not interfere uh, with other things depending on you know, what I want to do. So here's the sketch that I have. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go in and start creating some geometry. So I'm going to just pick on, on the sketch that we see here. And I'll say, let's extrude this out. And I'm going to give it uh, a thickness, you know, we could say 400,000. So we've got a plate started here. And at this point, I'm going to say, and this is the interface that we have for all the features that we create. I'm going to add it to an existing feature. Um, I could make it a totally new part. Technically, this is kind of a weldment. In, in early stages of its life, these would probably be separate parts. But usually after they get welded together, it's considered a single part or a part number. Uh, so I'm going to say let's add it to the existing part here. So now we can see that that's, that's been added. Um, I'm going to come over here and say let's take this as well and extrude him out and yeah, kind of leave, leave it like this. Let's set him, let's grab, just grab the sketch here. All right, so now we've created this part of our modification to this. Um, one of the things I want to do, I mentioned this kind of earlier on, is that uh, we can have multiple people working on the same thing at the same time. So that's what I'm going to do at this point. So I'm going to send out an invitation. Right now, I'm the only person that knows about this. I'm the only one that's been creating anything. What I can do, there's a big bright blue button over here called Share. So I can share this with other people. As I mentioned before, we could have teams of people. I can invite people in. In this particular point, I'm going to say, let's invite someone from our company. I start to type in their name. It narrows it down here. I'm going to say, let's share it with Nick. And so in sharing it with Nick, what do I want him to do? He can copy things, that's fine, link it to other documents. No, I don't want him to export anything, right? I don't want this going anywhere else. So I'm gonna take away that capability. He can share it with anybody, eh, he can comment, right? So he's somewhere else, far away, maybe close, I don't know, but uh, he can work on this as well. And um, so those, that's what I wanna do. I'll say share with Nick, you'll notice that he's been added there. Before there was nobody here. So I was the only one that has access to this boom we're working on. So <clears throat> let's uh, let's be Nick. So Nick gets an email saying, Bill has invited you to participate in working on this boom. So here's another screen. This would be Nick logging in. He's going to say, I'm going to sign in. We'll go to his documents. And what we'll see in his documents is here's the boom that I've been, uh, invited him to work on. So he's going to click on that. And because I gave him edit rights, he'll have this exact same menu I do, right? He'll have the same menu with the same capabilities to create geometry. I could have said I wanted him to have view rights. And then he could just see things. He can do cross sections. He can do measures and things like that. 
but he can't really change any geometry. So Nick's looking at it here. Um, I'm looking at it over here. I'll turn off my isolate over here. Now, the thing is, as I mentioned before, is that we're looking at the same model. So Nick could say, um, I want to follow you. So as I zoom in on something, it zooms in on his screen. As I zoom out, it zooms out. You'll notice my mouse on my side, on the left side, is a, an arrow. But you notice on Nick's side, it's a little hand. So I can point at different things. I can do comments for him. Um, one of the things I'm going to do, and we'll kind of, let's make my window a little bit smaller here. So with this, I'm going to come over here and uh, make some changes so we can see. So Nick sees everything that I do, right? Because we're sharing and we're working on the same model. So I'm going to come over and say, I'm going to make some changes to something. And um, let's go in and mirror something. So I'm going to say I want to mirror basically the stuff that I just made. So I'm going to mirror some features. And I'll say, you know, let's mirror these two features. And the plane that we want to mirror them about is maybe right here. So take a look at Nick's screen. So mine, we're seeing a preview of this. As soon as I hit the check mark, we see it on both screens, right, instantaneously. So that's the idea of working together in the cloud at the same time. Now, the thing is that we're not going to be bumping into each other and making features on top of features. People don't do that. When you go out on the shop floor, nobody's bumping into each other. Nobody's doing that. They know how to work together. You're just doing this virtually. Yeah. So let's... Uh, Let's kind of talk to Nick a little bit. So he saw, you know, saw these things updated, and he's saying, all right, so why would you invite me here? And um, I'm going to come over and make a comment. I'll say, um, you know, if I could spell, can you make an electrical box? And I'll add that comment. And right away on Nick's screen, right over here, he sees the same thing. So we can be texting back. We can also talk on the phone, obviously. But um, just for real quick hitting and communications, this is a really good way of doing things. And then he can come back to me and say, uh, where? So you can see my, his reply is where. So I'm going to go over and say, let's take a look at something. Um, Let's make a markup of this. So I'm in kind of a markup mode right now. I'm going to take uh, maybe like a little rectangle. Say, so let's sketch it out here. And then I'll put in some text. Place electrical box here. Let's make that a little bit bigger. And um, let's also go in and maybe make an arrow pointing at it. All right. So there's there's my marker. And so that's automatically been attached. I can just say, uh, look at this. I'll add that. So in Nick's end, you'll see he sees the markup. Obviously, if he clicks on it, he goes back to the markup that I see. This is where I want you to put the electrical box. So really, really simple communication tools. I can attach different files and movies or anything else that I wanted to do uh, to kind of help explain um, our working together here on the same assembly at the same time in the cloud. So Nick knows what he needs to do. I'm going to need to continue on with my uh, work here, maybe make a drawing for this or something like that. Uh, one of the things I've been in this part studio I mentioned before, this is where we create geometry. So I created these components. Um, then we can go into what would be an assembly. An assembly is where we put them together. So basically in the part studio, they were just all happening to be in the right place, but how they were connected to one another wasn't really established. So we can group them all together and kind of weld them together using this command, or we can group, uh, grab groups of them and weld them together. But then there's all other types of things here for like slider joints and planar joints and things like that. So for instance, I could grab this and kind of articulate it. Um, I can grab the boom. I grabbed all of the parts of the boom, welded them together, 
and then put little slider joints in where the uh, hydraulic pistons are. And then the same is obviously here through for this. So very easy for uh, us to create um, movable, actionable type of assemblies uh, to study kinematics or things like that. So let's, uh, I'll go back, kind of continue on my uh, way. Let's, let's be Nick for a while. So Nick comes in, he's been working, uh, he's got the information that he needs to create the electrical box for this boom. Uh, so he's gonna come in and say, uh, let's sketch on this face right here and we'll make a, a box maybe like this. I'll make it maybe six by nine inches. Um, now that we have that, um, we'll say let's take that and extrude it out. So extruding that, I can see the box here. I'm just going to give it a little bit more of a thickness. And I don't really want it to add it to this. This is a separate electrical box, right? It's going to be mounted. So I'm going to say make it a new part. So in doing so, it makes it a different color for me. I can assign different materials, obviously transparencies and like you see here colors or whatever we want to have but this will be our kind of an outline for our electrical box now it's just a block right it's a rectangle now let's look a little bit at sheet metal so while nick is doing all this i can continue on working over on my portions or developing a drawing or anything else and as he adds things if we pop back to me i see them right away there's none of this checking in checking out waiting for things to update None of that. It updates all the time. So um, let's let's take a look at working with this uh, maybe from a sheet metal standpoint. So we want to convert this to a sheet metal box. So sheet metal is kind of interesting with this software. I'm going to pick on this box and say I want to convert it to a sheet metal box. So I click on it. It automatically goes in and adds plates on all the sides of the box. It's adding it to the outside of the box. I'm going to flip the direction and say add it to the inside of the box. So now the box contains those plates. So let's go and say, um, we got part of the, the design for our electrical box here, but let's go in, our stuff here, let's go in and edit this. <clears throat> um, one of the things we want to do is make it kind of a hollow box. So I'm going to say, let's remove that. So now we've got this. Um, also, they're just, nothing is really bent yet. So I can come in and say, let's pick the edges that are going to get add bends to them. So I can just pick, let's say the four bottom edges. And then I can control, you know, what type of uh, clearance do we have? Um, what kind of gaps do we have? What's the K factor being used? Um, what kind of bend relief, we can have bob rounds, ripped, uh, rectangular relief. We'll kind of take the defaults for that. But this is our electrical box now that we've created. And if we kind of zoom in and on it here, we can kind of see that it's created the way that we would think that it would be. Now, the nice thing about sheet metal and on shape, that I can come over here and click on this. And it shows us the flattened sheet metal part. We can also look at each one of the joints You'll notice that in all three areas, so here's an area of the flattened version, here's the bent up version, here's kind of the table talking about the different bends. And again, we can control the radiuses individually if we wanted to. Um, you notice that we could say this particular edge here, you'll notice where it's highlighted in both the other uh, graphic areas. I could change that rip to a bend, right? Or, or vice versa, I could come up here and say, take this bend and rip it instead. So we can re design our or reflatten our part and maybe we don't like it laid out like this if we're thinking about how many of these can we put on a sheet maybe we want to flatten it a different way so it takes up uh, we can stack them or put them together on a, an overall sheet a little bit better so um, some of the capabilities with uh, the sheet metal product is awesome I can just write mouse button and say let's make a drawing of the flattened version then send out a, a DXF or DWG to the manufacturing guys and they can continue uh, working on this. So Nick's created his uh, box. He can you know, text me back and say I'm all done, but uh, because we're working on the same thing, I can see when he's done. 
So uh, at this point, I haven't created a drawing yet. I talked about over in the Nix world that he could uh, create a drawing of the flattened version. I'm going to make a drawing for this guy. So we just go over here. Remember in the Part Studio, we allow we can make parts, drawings, assemblies, all of that. I'm just going to say, let's create a drawing. I'm going to use a standard format that I created, company logo and all that stuff. But there are standard formats that come with you that can automatically lay the views out for you, things like that. Um, in this particular case, I want to lay the views out myself because this is a little bit uh, different. I'm going to say, I'm going to use an assembly and we'll take um, our assembly of our backhoe. We might pick a view, put it here. Um, maybe put another view up here. And then maybe <clears throat> kind of a, an isometric view here. And maybe our ISO view, I can just pick on this and say, you know, we'll kind of make it shaded. So now we've got kind of a layout of this. Uh, one of the things that I might want to add to it is a bill of material. So we have certainly all the capabilities for ANSI ISO standard type drawings for creating dimensions and tolerances and geometric uh, types of representations. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in and say, let's add a bill of material for this assembly. And I'll place it right here. Well, we've added our bomb, and we can see the list, the bill of material, um, the name, the quantities. We can add any columns in here we want with user-defined features and all of those type of things. You notice the bomb, there's lots of parts here. So I'm just gonna take this, and I'm gonna just kind of right mouse button, and I'm gonna say split the bill of material right here, because it's longer than what I really need. And now I can grab this part of the bomb and kind of drag it over. And we just kind of want to locate it probably up where the other one is. So I'm just going to drag them up, place them right there. So now we have the bill of material. So this is why I put the views over here, right? So we could fit in the bomb because I knew it was going to be a big one. But here we have uh, capabilities now that were on here. You'll notice, this is an interesting thing. The electrical box is not here. So why is that? When I created this assembly, I said use everything that was in the part studio. So it did use everything that was in the part studio. At that time, the electrical box didn't exist. This guy did exist, and when I added information to him, it added those. But because this was not part of the assembly of the electrical box, it's not there. So to bring them in, I can just say, let's insert. I can go through here and find our parts, and I can yeah, I'll just search for it um, by name. Here it is. It places it right where Nick created it. I can move it around and put it somewhere else, but in, for practical purposes, I'm gonna place it here. So let's go back to the drawing and see what happens. When I go back um, to our drawing, we still don't see it, but what we do see is over here in the corner, this little yellow button saying, this is out of, uh, out of whack really with what is really uh, in this assembly. So basically it's kind of a refresh. Onshape will always ask you if you want to regenerate or rechange something, which is different than other CAD systems. Some systems, CAD systems do it automatically in drawings. If you have a really complex drawing with lots of views, it might take a long time to do that. So maybe you want to wait a while before you update something. But anyway, so here's our assembly that we see here. Um, I could come in and say, uh, we don't really, well, let's put some balloons on here. So here's our electrical box put him yeah put him there this is the component that we were working on before so put that up there and again that's tying into here's that electrical I should have named it electrical box instead of part 74 but uh, you get the idea um, and I can go in the bill of material and change the name there or I can go uh, to the part and have it reflect in the bill of material so that's a little quick overview of working with onshape Remember, everything I did is in the cloud. It didn't use my CPU at all. It doesn't use my RAM at all. The only thing that it will use is my graphics. If I spin things around, it'll hit my graphics card. Other than that, everything is being done in the cloud. And I guarantee you, the server that this is running on has more horsepower, more RAM, and more disk space than the computers you're using at your office. So it's really nice taking advantage of Amazon's uh, web services and their servers to do all the heavy lifting. And then I'm just kind of directing things here from my, uh, from my um, in this case, a browser. 
But I wanted to show you one other thing too, just to kind of bring this across. So here's my phone. So I can select on this, and this will bring us into our backhoe. And again, like I mentioned before, we can access this from anywhere. So I'm just using my finger to kind of manipulate this. I can kind of zoom in, zoom out. I can articulate, and zoom or articulate this uh, assembly if I wanted to. I can look at the drawing. The interesting thing is I'm not in viewing mode. I can hit this button here and I can create features or I can redefine features or things like that. So the app on the phone, because it has a, this has a little different interface because it's all touch screen, right? So it has to represent things a little bit differently than we see on the screen, the big screen back here. But it's easier for the user to do that. Again, you know, this could be my manager and he's coming in, kind of, or it could be a customer. I, like I said before, I can send this link right up here to a customer and he would get that information. But now we can see, you know, the backhoe here laid out and we can kind of zoom in on it and take a look at things and uh, make some comments, right? So there's commenting right here. He could comment to me, you know, you only got two balloons, add the rest of them or something like that. But the idea is, is that anybody can access this work given the right privileges and work together in the cloud. That's where all the efficiency comes from. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back to Sierra. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer those now. All righty, thanks, Bill. And it's always, you know, great job with today's demonstration. Um, I actually don't see any questions in the chat box as of now, but as I mentioned earlier, feel free to visit us at onshape.eacpds.com and we would be happy to answer any questions or provide any more info. You can also register for our next webinar on our events page there as well. So with that, I hope everyone has a great weekend and thank you again for spending some of your afternoon with us.